Yes. A little backwards audio to get us started off by thunder. Love walked in through the door. It is the Yeah, Come On Show. I am Southside Steve. I will be your host, and that is Brett Barney, my co-host, and we're ready to go. Uh, this is show number 108. You're on Jameson. Uh, I'm on water right now. I've been drinking a little bit over the past couple of days with the Bravos and uh, thought I'd take myself <laughs> a little rest. <laughs> So you're on Water Sun. I'm on Jameson. Sun. Jameson Sun and Water Sun. I yeah, like how it. is Jameson Sun Irish? I don't know. Jameson is Irish as hell, though, isn't it? And being Irish, you know, on St. Patrick's Day, I'll have one. I'll have one Jameson. I'm like, okay, here's for my grandmother, Adelaide, whose family came over on the boat. She was the Damn, only one born. Adelaide? That was my grandmother. She was the only one born in America. She was born. She was the youngest born in Pennsylvania. Uh, they came straight on through, man, came over in 1898 and she was born in, uh, 1904. So, but the family came over in 1898. So, you know, there, so, and you know, Irish Catholic, the whole deal. Uh, granddad was a drinker. Grandmother never touched the stuff. Uh, my mom never touched the stuff. It's just, uh, me. I touched the stuff. <laughs> hey, and sometimes your stuff got touched. So yeah, and Full you know circle. what? Well, you know, whatever happens, happen. Uh, but I'll tell you right now, it's been one hell of a week. And uh, the good news is, what happens tonight? Do the Braves win? I will tell you. I called it on Rock One Hundred Point Five. I'm like, look, here's the deal. We're going to win the first one. And we're going to lose the second one. I said it. I said it over and over on the air. And they go, what, what, why would you say that? I go, because here's the deal. We're going to win the first one because we're the better team. But the second one, we're going to let them win because their fan base deserves a win at home before we sweep their ass in Atlanta. Give them one win. Let them wear their little you know, hankies on their heads. Let them do what they do. They've been in three out of five of the last World Series. I don't feel sorry for them. Um, give them their one win at home. And then come back to Atlanta and beat them tonight, tomorrow night, and Sunday night, and end this thing. Agree? See, oh, I 100% agree. I didn't think that we were going to win the second game. Okay, this is super weird. And I think I texted this to you. You did. You I, talked about you bet you had a premonition. I, I bet on it because I had a sign from God. Yeah, you said God, God literally in your text. I'm like, God. I got in my car. And you know me, I listen to talk radio constantly. Anything talk, I love it. I think it's the most entertaining part of radio. If I want to listen to music, no offense, sorry. I'm going to listen to Sirius or Apple music because I'm monetarily invested. So yeah. I want to hear people talk and I want to hear personalities and what people think and what's going on in the world and what's going on in the day. And I was listening to Stern. I was on my lunch break and I just got fed up. He just got really political. And I was like, you know what? I, I just need music or something to tune myself out. And I just hit a button on the screen and it popped on Sirius XM um, country or whatever, a prime country. And it's Garth Brooks calling Baton Rouge, followed by a country boy can survive. And I don't know why it clicked in my head. I was driving down 75. I go, Braves are going to win tonight. Braves are going to win tonight. It's hit. It, it was just on those two songs. I literally text that to my wife. And Braves are going to win. I said, she was like, why? And I said, this is a sign from God. And so I went and I bet on them. Boom. They win next day. So yesterday I get in the car and I'm like, hmm, I didn't get the sign today. So I'm, I'm not thinking the bet. I'm thinking maybe go Astros. Yeah. And I get in my car, leaving work and I pop the radio on Garth Brooks comes on. I'm going, Oh no. Is this about to happen again? And then it followed up with like, I don't know. Winona judge. I don't know. Some random. Oh, it's probably those Dixie bitches. Yeah, it was something like that, but I didn't get the dual song vibe. So I knew last, or, you know, two nights ago was going to be a rough night. Astros were going to win. What are the I odds on that there. right now? So if you bet $100, what are you winning? If so you bet what, like for, for like night one, you bet Braves to win or you bet Astros to win. Like I'd be more curious because I knew the Astros were going to win last night. So $100, what would I have won? 118 Damn. So, yeah, so you would have bet 100. They would have given you back your 100 and 118. Man, I should have done it. That's so that funny. was the first night because the Braves were one and a half point or one and a half run underdogs. I didn't bet that either. I was like, oh, should I take it? No, I went money line. We're outright winning this game. And we did. Yeah, 
That's it. I picked the win. I don't get all naughty with runs and and shit. I'm just like, let me just tell you who's going to win. At the end of the night, this is who's going to win. Uh, I think the Braves will clinch this. I think it's uh, it's a similar vibe going on back in the 90s that I remember all too well because I was there. I was at game one, had two tickets to game six, and uh, gave them to my brothers, Kevin and Matt, who went in my place. Uh, I told my date, we're not going to the World Series. I'm sending my brothers in. She had a little mini heart attack. I'm like, get over it. You know, <laughs> whatever. I, I just, she was a little trick. And I was like, I'm going to have fun this weekend with you. I've had fun the past three weekends, but you're not the one. So I'm not taking you into the World Series. I'm looking at my two brothers. I just saw the look on their faces when I was about to head in for my second World Series game of the series. And I'm like, uh uh-uh, uh uh. This is a reason my boss handed me two tickets. I gave them to them. Oh, so you got free tickets. Oh, I did. I've never, I didn't pay. I've never paid for my world series tickets or my super bowl ticket set front row for the Falcons in 98, uh, against the Broncos saw us lose on the 30 yard line, broke my F and heart, but I had a ticket from Miller light. Uh, they gave me one seat front row. I was like, doesn't get, will never get better than this. And then my boss uh, knew he wasn't paying me well at 96 Rock back in the day. It was only my uh, second year in radio getting paid. And he's like, you busted your ass. Uh, I'm going to give you game one ticket. And then the last night he had friends that were supposed to show and they weren't going to make it. And I was standing there and I'd been waiting the whole night. He goes, Southside, go ahead. Here you go. And he gave me the other two tickets. And my date's like, oh my God. <gasps> Oh my God. And she's having like, Oh, we're going in. We're going in. I'm like, no, we're not. My brothers are going in. And I sent them in and I do hold it over their head. I remind them what I did for them (laughs) all the time. But you know, this, this time I knew every brave, uh, I was fortunate enough to be in the locker room probably about 50 times. I was at spring training, uh, for, uh, God, 11 days in West Palm, um, with them interviewing them, talking to them, got to know them. Uh, ended up hanging out on a regular basis with, uh, Jason Schmidt, crime dog, Mark Lemke, um, occasionally Blouser, and, you know, and, and then running to the others. So I knew everybody on the team. I had no, or I have no relationship with anybody on this team. I don't know Freddie Freeman. I don't know anybody. I've never been in the locker room. I only know maybe three names, uh, I'm totally jumping on the bandwagon and somebody gave me shit for it. And I'm like, hold on, dude, I've lived in this city my entire life. I'm as old as the franchise. Okay. A date, date to date. I, I've been to Fulton County. I've been to, I've been to world series. I've been to turn. I've done my duty. Okay. So what I've distanced myself for the last couple of years from baseball with kids. And you want to give me shit for that, for jumping on you can, but who cares? Yeah. I'm jumping on. So I'm with you. I'm somebody that my entire life, Braves fan, my family had season tickets at Turner Field. So I grew up going there. I went to Fulton County Stadium as a kid. I now go to, well, SunTrust, Truist, whatever it's been, as many times as possible. I would cook dinner listening to the games on TV and then sit down and eat and watch. And I was very invested into the team. Now, this season has been completely different because Bally Sports took over the contract. They don't allow it to be on any streaming services. I cut the cord a few years ago. I use YouTube TV. So I haven't been able to watch any of the games this year. And initially at the beginning of the season, when they were on ESPN, I got to watch those games. Now, later into the season, they even started blacking those games out if there was local in your area. So even I couldn't even watch ESPN games. I would either have to go to a bar to watch a game, but you're not going to do that. What? 160 plus times. That. I don't live that lifestyle. I'm sorry. Like No, I, I, I don't either. And I don't blame you or blame anybody else. But the thing is, if you've supported them before and you've been there, so what if you're not in this season? Uh, just take note that I have seen them lose the World Series four times. I've been a part of it in radio, supporting it, handing out T-shirts, being outside the stadium, all in, all in, lo- lose, lose, lose. I've had my heart broken. A bunch of times been there and that's okay. I can stay with that, but man, we have not been in the world series in 22 years and you're going to give me crap for not being into this team. Whatever. You know, it's funny that you say that. So I feel like 
this is the furthest I've ever been away from the team my entire me, me life. Me too. I, I'll give you that. Me too. But I, it's not like I don't support them. Like if I go out and they're on, I'm watching the game because I don't get to see it at home. And that's yeah. not on me and that's not on the Braves either. That's just on the MLB and the contract with Bally Sports. That's all it is. But, you know, it, so this is really funny. I don't even know if I've ever told you this. I went to a You're game. You're gay. My, close. Okay. Very close. It's Okay. <laughs> I don't care. I don't think I w- you I don't think you're into me, but go ahead. I'm I'm pretty sure it got thrown away, but in high school, you know, I was a lifeguard, all that stuff during the summer. And you have to wear a shirt, you know, I was swim Atlanta, worked for worked at Roswell Country Club, and it says, he says lifeguard and all this stuff on it. But you can also just wear a regular just t shirt if you want to. And I had gone out to a Braves game in high school, and there's this big bus parked outside, 96 Rock. Yeah. And they were throwing shirts out that were just white t-shirts and it was the Braves logo, but it said 96 rock. And it said on the back, the regular guys are back. And that was my lifeguard shirt for four years. The problem is I I wanted to find it, but you're dealing with so many chemicals. They eat your clothes. That's why you kind of wear free stuff. And it had so many holes in it. I'm sure it's gotten thrown away at my folks house over time, but I wish I still had it because I I, want to say you might've been the person who threw it out who I caught it from. Who knows? Who knows? That's so funny. Did a lot of those kind of promotions, man. We had our big vehicle and we'd go and get on top of it or beside That's exactly it, what a, it was. You guys were on top uh, throwing them. Yeah. And we had an RV uh, deal too. Uh, that was all tapered. I mean, I did the Braves hardcore and I think that's what happened. I got burnt out. Um, in, uh, 2004, the regular guys got fired and I survived it cause I wasn't in the room and I tried to stop them. Um, so I had, nothing to do with it. It was beautiful. And I was actually trying to get myself removed from the show because Tim Rhodes and I wanted to do afternoons together and we've been greenlit for it. And I'm like, I'm tired of these dudes. Same money afternoons, not waking up with my lifestyle, doing four gigs a week, no alarm clock, sleeping in, working with a friend, not two dickheads. I'm in, I'm in. So, uh, so, you know, it was just one of those things, uh, that I'm like, I'll I'll do it. So I'm out of the room, so I don't get canned on the whole thing, but Rhodes and I have to take over morning show duties because we ended up doing Bob and Tom syndicated radio in, in the meantime. So the whole 2005 season, we're there living every Friday. I have to do a broadcast from Turner field. I have pass on top of pass. I can walk on the field during the middle of the game and talk to the umpire. I think if I wanted to, I had that many passes. So I'm there before games, you know, waving to people walking around with little Manuel Lewis, who's, you know, whatever famous person was there hanging out with the players up until game time in the locker room till 10 minutes before when Bobby wants to talk to everybody. Uh, And I was dating a Braves girl and uh, I'm waiting for her. I'm getting done with my duties. I'm eating lunch or dinner, you know, with, with all the announcers and stuff. And I wait for her to get off after the game. So I'm just living there. And I'm like, I think I got burned out. But this is fun. Everybody loves winning a World Series. The good news is we have. The Falcons have not won a Super Bowl. Basketball, we've never done. We've never made it to the big We got game. close. We got close last year. And I think this year could be the year Georgia is showing that, you know, outside of some insane upset, they're going to take it to number one and and be number one and win the national championship. No offense, Alabama. All I'm saying is from a point of view of Georgia, this could be a damn good year for the state. You know, maybe the NBA does well. The soccer team wins it again. We get it. World Series. Everybody does it, but the Falcons. I just don't think there's any way we're making it to the Super Bowl this year. I could be mistaken. I hope I am. I've never doubted my boys before, but I'm like, I'm just trying to be realistic here. Yeah, I don't see a Super Bowl happening. I am curious about this because two different generations right now, 2021, 95, or any of the other times you've been to a World Series game, winning or losing, it doesn't matter. I'm curious scalping tickets what were world series ticket prices on the secondary market if you recall were they absurd like they are right now standing room only twelve hundred dollars yeah there was absurd for sure uh i know axel you know who uh is covering mornings while we're looking for you know somebody new to for me to host with 
on right now are rock mornings, which is fine. I get it. We're in a we're in a weird spot, but he's doing a great job. Everybody's busting their ass, you know, filling a void. Uh, he was he had the corporate code because you know we are the FM home of the Atlanta Braves. So he had a managerial code where he could go in and nobody else was buying tickets, so he's buying tickets, and he's like, I'm just going to get them for myself. And he used the code, and he bought 400 section, two tickets behind home plate. And they were eight hundred dollars a piece, and that's that. That was the price sold by the Braves, not a secondary, in you know, group. So there's nobody making any cash on it. That's just buying it straight from the stadium, straight straight from the Atlanta Braves. But that's pretty damn high. He said within a day they were worth eleven hundred each. So, uh, of course, you know, he's not going to sell. I mean, he can sell them. He's been talking about selling them because he bought them for himself. It's not like they were given to him. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't a free ticket that, you know, we both know the radio rules. You get a free ticket. You either give it away for free or you go. That's it. Or you burn it one or the other, you know, but you do not sell it. So I have never bought a ticket for uh the olympics a world series or the super bowl all events i've gone to just because that is the one perk you get in radio you may not always be happy with your salary but there were perks now it's still there but nowhere near like it used to be so there's no tickets floating around right now Uh, so i can't tell you i never even thought about selling my two tickets uh when they were handed to me or the one ticket when i went during game one in 95 so I, I don't know. I do know that the prices were always crazy for these things. I knew they were crazy in 98 for the Super Bowl. So, yeah, I'm oh, going to say they're always crazy. I'll give you Super Bowl. I dated this girl back in the day. Her dad was a high up at BlackBerry. And as we all know, BlackBerry before smartphones was the only phone. That's, that's all we carried. I had like three of them. Yeah. And so her dad would get to go to all the Super Bowls. And it was, you know, full suite, food, drinks, all this stuff. He told me he went to five or six of them and he would get two tickets to every Super Bowl. And when he would get there, his tickets, if he wanted to sell the two suite tickets. Now, granted, you can't sell them because he's uh, an executive and you can't have random people in the BlackBerry suite with your guests and everything. He said, easy. I could have gotten or he could have gotten twenty five thousand dollars for the two. Easy. He's like, I could redo part of my kitchen or redo my whole kitchen. See, that's just insane. And I, and I get it. There are people out there that have got money to blow. There are people out there with millions of dollars, you know, in the bank and a million dollars in a checking account, which is an insane amount to keep in your checking account. So I think I just made that up, but, uh, either way they've got, they've got, that's not insured either. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. It's only over $250,000. Yeah, there you go. Maybe, but they got money to burn. Um, so they'll do it in corporates, you know, corporate stuff or corporations. If you're CEO, you know, there's ways back in the day, especially to write this kind of stuff off. But I will tell you that the parking pass alone is going for, uh, in the orange lot, which is where they valet your car, um, is $1,200 per parking spot right now. Uh, regular parking spots, um, Axel got and he's the only guy I'm living vicariously through on this because I work with him and he's talking about it. His wife bought two parking places for $30. They're both going for 105 right now. So that's just, but that's in a lot across over at the uh, Galleria. You got to walk across the, the interstate, but they're good. They tripled in value. So that's kind of what's, what's going on. Um, you know, it's a big, it's, it's a big, it's day. ridiculous. Did you even try and get tickets by the way? I didn't even ask. I did, I, I did not because I, I kind of knew that, you know, my wife, if they were given to me, um, she would have gone, but I didn't try to buy them because I knew what the ticket prices would be. And it's just like, this is in the point in my life where I can do that stuff. You know, if you have kids, I know you're just barely into marriage, but you know, we've got a, a four and, and a one and it's just tough. So, you know, I've got my mom coming in just to help with trick or treating and I'm driving halfway to Alabama to pick her up, to meet my bro, because you know, her, her husband's not coming. I'm like, just get here. We need help. Any help I can get. I'm worn the F out. You know, there ain't, there's, I, you could say, yeah, I get my house clean. Yes. I have a yard guy. I even have a grass guy, but I do not have an au pair. It's on me every damn bit of it. And it's brutal. So yeah, I'm not at that point. So I'll, I'll watch it on television, but 
you know, I've lived and done that. And my wife doesn't care about that kind of stuff. Whereas I do, she doesn't, I have, well, I'm you, a bucket, I'm a bucket list guy. She if you do not. get tickets and she doesn't care, I mean, if you, if you oh, I know. Call them, I'll be out there Saturday. My okay. wife and I are going to go out. We don't have tickets. I did get through in the, or tomorrow. Yeah. I did get through in line. I hopped on early on the Ticketmaster uh, sale. What was that? Like Tuesday or Monday, Monday. And Monday, they went on sale at like 10 o'clock. Yeah. Everybody I work with. And I just sat down at my desk and I was like, I wonder what the, how much these are going for. And I jumped on my Ticketmaster app and I get in line and I'm seeing all these people around me. They're like, I'm 2000 in line, 2000 yes. plus or this, this, and this dude, do you want to know what place in line I was? What? Take a guess. 4,000. Number eight. I was number well eight. Well done, because uh, I've talked to three or four people that said they were in the 2000s. I almost thought that was a white lie, because everybody kept saying they were in the 2000s. You were number eight? I was number eight. It came back. It said, you are number eight. I got in oh. like that, and then I saw the prices. The wife and I decided, we set a number, said, this is as much as we'd be willing to spend to go to the World Series. Because when I saw that and I stayed on it, I was like, okay, I need to hit her up. Be like, we actually have a chance to get tickets right now. We set the number. I got through, started looking through the prices. Yeah. Uh, the price that we set would have bought one seat. You're doing well because, uh, you know, my friend, his, uh, his level was 250 per ticket. And his wife didn't get that and bought them both for 800. So Axel's in, 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 in a fix. That's why he's like, we're selling them. He goes, I cannot sit in an $800 seat looking at my wife sitting in an $800 seat and have a good time. And I get it. You know, for everybody, there's a price. He said, I would have done 250 a ticket and that would have stung. But, you know, it is what it is. He said in the seats in the playoffs, the first uh, playoffs it were $30 for the same seat, $78 for uh, the, the last series before we got into the World Series. He goes, I can't sit in that same seat and pay $700 more. I can't do it. And I'm like, I get it. I get it. It's insane. insane I have a friend. Markup. I have a friend. His so, And I'll give you my number. So my number was 400 that's what I said. And she came per, back per, with, per ticket. No, for both of us to go. So 200 a seat. All right. And his was 500. That, and that sounds reasonable for nosebleeders or standing yeah, room or only. standing room it, only. It and sounds she, reasonable. She came back to me with, why don't we bump that up to 600? This is once in a lifetime. And then I sent her the messages and I'm going, yeah, we're looking more like a grand. And I don't think I really want to spend it that like, we can just go, to the battery and spend two hundred dollars that's your uber your drinks your meal and your uber home and you're a part of it you're not you're not in but you're right next to the wall you can go up and lean up against the wall and be like i'm as close as i can get right now i'm as close even as I started can. reaching out to some uh, i guess i don't know we'll, say, we'll call them first responder friends being yeah. like hey you're gonna be around <laughs> Oh yeah, there could be somebody now. Is there they an option? Slip me in. You've got to be there to get slipped in. I've heard stories of people getting slipped in. I've never been slipped in, but I can tell you it does happen. So go be a part of it. See what see who sees you, who recognizes you, who may have an extra ticket and throw you a silly price. You never know what can happen. But if you're not there, nothing's gonna happen. So go for yeah. it. Yeah. Well, and then my worry was buy the tickets, spend a thousand dollars. And go, oh crap, this is a tomorrow night's game, Saturday's game. You know, they hadn't even played yet. What if they're down 3 0 in the series and I'm going to watch Houston win the whole damn thing? Nobody here is going to want to pay for that ticket. The prices uh -huh. are going to plummet. And then once they won the first game, I was like, yeah, I probably would have cashed in and would have sold them and had a blast. Yeah, that's what you do. You do. You sell. You have, to, you have to sell it at that point. If you think your team's going to lose, you sell. You do. You oh yeah, you don't you don't pay to watch your team lose. There can't be anything more painful than that. You got to have faith in your team. So there's that fine line. But I'll tell you right now, hell with it. The good news is our Atlanta Braves are in the World Series. It's it's the first time in 22 years. I think we win tonight. We win tomorrow and Sunday, and we end it. I really do. I don't think this makes it back to Houston. If it does, I would like to believe it ends in Game Six. None of us need 
that kind of stress. But it is the Yeah, Come On show. We're going to take a break real quick. It is a World Series week. It is show 108. Special thanks to OxygenFinancial.com, 285.com for all your insurance needs. And, of course, counseling. If the Braves lose, you might need Ridgeline Counseling. You might need Dr. David Markwell. We'll shoot to commercials and be back with the Yeah, Come On show next. I'm Allison with Circle 285 Insurance, and we've got you covered at every turn. Whether ITP or OTP, the only TP we care about is total protection for your family. Have you ever wondered if you're paying too much for home and auto insurance? Do you have enough coverage, and will your carrier pay your claim in an accident? Visit us at circle285.com for a free quote today. Visit circle285.com or call me, Allison, at 770-904-9586 for a free quote today. I'm David Markle with Rizline Counseling. The current situation we're in is bringing all kinds of issues into our lives. Everything from stress and anxiety to frustration, bouts of depression and loneliness. Well, we're here to help at Rizline Counseling. You can reach us at 770 770- 993-9700, or you can email us at rizlinecounseling at gmail.com. Currently, we're offering telemental services through video and phone platforms and in in-person office visits. In the meantime, stay safe. We'll get through this. Yeah, come on. We're back with the Yeah, Come On show in a World Series week with our Atlanta Braves. We don't get to say that often. We would not have been able to say said that for 22 years if we'd been running a podcast for 22 years. It's been that long. It's crazy. I would never thought our last World Series was 1999, but that's been the case. So we're back in it. we got a great team. It is a team that likes each other which we keep hearing that from the locker room. These guys dig each other, they got each other's back, and that's part of the magic. So, uh, again, I think we win tonight, Saturday and Sunday. We don't make it back to Houston. We'll see if that happens. I'm Southside Steve, Brett Barney. And, uh, you know, we got a couple things we wanted to talk about, but you ran something by me that I thought was pretty interesting. And uh, you want to talk about PETA, which always scares the crap out of me, but go ahead. Well, okay. So, PETA... I don't know if you saw this or not, but I, it's definitely out there. PETA wants to get rid of the na- the term, as we're talking Braves, bullpen, because they think it's offensive to cows. <laughs> and they want to change the name. They want the MLB to change the name that. to Arm That's... Barn. What? Arm Barn. Like the arm, like you're pitching arm your arm and barn. it's a barn. That is stupid. Nobody cares. Cows don't kill. They don't care if I'm correct. And from what I've heard, and I don't know if it's, it's true. I've not been around that many farm animals, although I did milk rosebud, not once, but twice at Atlanta dairies. Um, (laughs) Somebody will catch that reference. Come on now. That's that's good. That's good. All right. But I I know insects are kind of stupid, but aren't cows just the next dumber thing. I mean, they're not, they're like, there's, there's, there's the insects. No, there's fish. Then there's insects and then cows. In other words, not really smart. So we're worried about offending them. Also, I learned this last week on the AM radio, not on my radio, that cows are the ones killing the ozone. It's not aerosol cans. It's not chemicals. It's cow farts. So why do we give two S's about cows? I don't know. Uh, and we eat them. They're raised to be eaten or provide milk. One or the other. Nobody has a pet cow. Greta Van Thunberg might think different, but who knows? Okay. All right. I got you. You know, and I'm not trying to start anything here. It just sounds silly that the bullpen at some point, we can't be completely PC. We need a little bit of edge. Do you realize if we're completely PC another country's going to go, oh, they're ripe for the taking. And that's when you're going to get a world war because we're going to like a bunch of pussies. So uh, you have no choice, but to at least have a slight edge, let's leave the bullpen. That may stop us from having a world war. Leave it. Leave it alone. I think you nailed that on the head. I have literally nothing to add. I 100% agree with everything you just said. But here's the thing. Speaking of PETA and animals, I got to hit this topic. The weirdest story I think I've read today, there's this initiative. It's called Project SETI, C-E-T-I. And it's using devices to listen to sperm whales and how they communicate. And they interpret their voices and attempt to communicate back and whatnot. And the team says that their hope 
is within the next five years that humans are going to be able to communicate with the whales. And they have basically collected 4 billion sperm whale coda clicking sounds. And they're going to feed this all to AI in hopes that it can translate this. And then they're going to put a chat bot and release it into the ocean so that we can communicate with whales. Yeah, I, I don't see the need. I can tell you right now, I know what the whales' are, first words are going to be to man. They're going to be like, stop killing us. Stop polluting the ocean. Those are the first two things they're going to say. And then they're going to threaten us. They're going to go, if you don't, we're going to start tipping over every effing ferry boat we see. We're going to ram you Moby Dick style if you don't stop polluting the ocean or killing us. And then we're going to say, okay. Well, what are we going to say? Who cares what a whale has to say? I, are they going to tell I, us where hidden treasure is in the ocean? I don't I, know. I don't no, know. They, probably yeah. not. No. What's going on in the ocean? I get it. Water. Most the earth. That's why signs is stupid. We've had this discussion. I put a tinfoil freaking hat on for it. I don't care what a whale has to say. Now, if I had to pick an animal that I would like to communicate with that we could edge science towards, I'm thinking it's got to be first round, first pick, you know, got to be a dog. You got to be man's gotta best be a dog. friend, but man's best friend. Most people have dogs. You're not going to pick a cat because they're, they'll go sideways on you. In a cats are, they don't cats care. are all smug. You know, yeah, like, they're smug. You need a dog. You need man's best friend. The guy that protects people, warns people, communicates dogs. Also keep people from breaking into people's homes and they keep you company to the day you die. And they love you unconditionally. There's no doubt the number one pet. The number one animal to us is man's best friend, a dog. I agree, hundred percent. But if you didn't pick a dog, next I would pick birds. I would want to have birds as friends. I'm like, oh, that's a good one. I'm like, tell me what's going on. Tell me, uh, fly up in the neighborhood. Tell me if there's anybody breaking into cars. Tell me, tell me if there's anybody coming after me. If I'm in a field, tell me if there's anybody around. If I'm smoking pot in a, somewhere where I shouldn't be. Tell me if the cops are around. If I'm speeding, hey, fly up about a couple of miles. Yes. Tell me if there's any oh, speed that's traps. that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So birds would be just early warning signs, letting you know aerial views of what's going on around you. And you're like, okay, cool. I'm trying to think of ones that, like, animals that I would like to talk with. I don't know. Elephant? Penguin? No, no. Come uh, on. Penguin. <sighs> I don't know. What do you got to talk to? I mean, they, they're not seeing much They're You know, they're, if they're in the wild, they're in, they're in a frozen ass tundra. And if they're in the zoo, they're going to be like, most of y'all are assholes. I'm like, okay, I get it. Uh, I don't know. I think dog all damn day would be cool. It would also be cool if you had a pet mouse or if you could talk to a oh, mouse, a rat, a rat. Cause then you turn rat. them loose in the house and you're like, how's my wiring look? How's everything go up in the roof? Tell me if there's any holes in the roof. You know, because they can get places you can't. Tell me if there's any black mold in the house. I got one for you. What? Squirrel. That's good. Squirrel would be solid. If we could talk to squirrels, why are we working on whales? Yeah, I get. Rather yeah, be I dolphins uh, and whales. Well, dolphin is is uh, that is next to dogs. A dolphin, uh, basically, a dolphin is a dog in the ocean. They're that sweet. They're sweet. How much, you. how much money do you think science has spent on this project to be able to talk to whales? I mean, I want to say probably a billion dollars. Probably. <laughs> Realistically, you're probably right. And and who knows if it'll even work? I mean, who? I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, everybody knows if you've watched Dory, you're like, oh, well, well, oh. I mean, I think we all think we can talk like a whale. Oh, no, no. Ooh. I don't even know what I just said. I hope the page win. Who knows? Who knows? Well, uh, you know what? There you have. I hope animals one day can talk. We're keeping it tight. It's a World Series day. Uh, good luck to our Atlanta Braves tonight. Uh, it is the yeah, Come On Show. Once again, thanks to our sponsors, Ted Jenkins at Oxygen Financial, Circle 285 for all your insurance needs go to them just for a quote i'm on them uh i left uh i left my group after 17 years and i'm like i saved 700 dollars a year and lastly dr david markwell excellent counselor somebody can talk to at ridgeline counseling it is the yet yeah, come on show 
and in saying that, there's also a, uh, a sad thing that happened on the Yet Come On show. And I'm going to shoot it over to Brett Barney because I knew this guy was a fan, at least of my radio career, wanted to come on the show. But I met him through you. And uh, he came on our show. And not only did we do an episode with him, but we also did what we call On the Couch. And spot that's what on the couch. Spot, a spot on the couch, which we will continue when we find ourselves in the same room. A spot on the couch. You get the reference. But it's a quick five-minute interview that gets naughty, nasty, and really real with whoever wants to do it with us. And this guy did it. And I'll let you take it away, Brett Barney, and uh, tell everybody uh, about this individual and what happened. Yes. So as some people who follow us on social media, which you should at the Yekamon show, probably a terrible time to plug anything as you're talking about somebody who passed away. Nickelback Rick, I think he probably would have done the same thing. He was one of the good friends of the show. He um, listened to Rock 100.5. He was a regular guys fan through and through. If you've ever been to Marietta Square, that was kind of where he lived and reigned and ruled and Hung out with everyone. He worked at the Strand Theater. He ran the open mic nights every Wednesday night, just randomly got into comedy. Looked just like, um, what's his name? Uh, Silent Bob. Exactly. You know, Kevin like Kevin Smith. Wore the baseball cap backwards, had the long hair. He looked like Silent Bob, just a little bit older. Yeah, and he was he was a great guy. He came on the show. It's actually the very first episode where we were in studio that you missed. Because you had to take care of a, uh, you well Amanda and the pregnancy and all that. And no, I, I didn't even know until after that show when you told me you were having another kid. Yeah, I was having another kid. So there you have it. So we had some things going on. I couldn't be there. It's one of the few shows I've ever missed. So then you brought him back so I could meet him, and we did a second show with him, and then we did a spot on the couch, yes. which you'll see, which you'll see here now. But it is a shame. This guy uh, was a great guy. He had family. Um, he was one of those guys that meet his kid at the bus stop and do nice, thoughtful things. He was very involved. And he will be uh, so missed just in his family setting, not to mention the people that were entertained by him because he was in the comedy world on a regular basis. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just a shame. And you lose people and you don't know why you lose good people. But we lost a good guy. And, uh, you know, those, ep those episodes are worth watching. Uh, he, was, he was a funny dude. I, he, I was entertained by him. Yeah, very dry guy. Actually, is the one who pitched, I think, to us, hey, you should do something where you bring people on and like just talk with them for like five minutes, have them tell the story. And then you ran with him. We're like, we should call it Spot on the Couch. And I was like, this is a great idea. And I just yep. sit quiet. At that's <laughs> just it. Let, let it happen. And, and let it happen. So uh, do you have his full name? Yeah, his name is Rick Wayne. Nickelbag right. Rick is what he went by on stage on the show. Like I said, yeah. great guy, very funny guy. And, and and the thing was, he wasn't all about, I guess, being like the super famous guy, but he was all about helping guys try and connect or women, whoever, and the comedy world and working with them. You know, see, he, he saw somebody on stage struggling. He'd be the person that would tell you, hey, you did this, but kind of work this way. And he was just a really good mentor to a lot of people, I think, in the comedy world and I know this past Wednesday, they held a uh, memorial in Marietta Square where 100 and, over 150 comics came out to show support and remembrance for Rick. Well, to Nickelback Rick from the Yeah Come On show, uh, may you be looking down at us, sir, and uh, we'll see you soon. Not too soon, but we'll see you soon. Welcome to the Yeah Come On show presents... A spot on the couch. I'm Southside Steve, your host. That's Brett Barney, my co-host. Yeah, come on. And in the center, this is Rick Nickelbacker. No, Nickelbag Rick. Nickelbag. Nickelbag Rick. Not Nickelback Rick. Nickelbag Rick. Because uh, I, I got to tell you, I don't hate on Nickelback. A lot of people well, do. I would I don't. much rather have my name associated with marijuana than a shitty Canadian rock band. Okay, you say <laughs> shitty. I say sh I say pretty shit and good. <laughs> pretty shit and good? Uh, All right. Shit good. Pretty shit and good. Come on. No. Hey, look. Nickelback. Look, we won't get into this Nickelback. No, 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 no. We so, don't. Nickelback, you stand for marijuana. Because yes, nobody do. sells nickel bags anymore. It's kind of an old school kind of saying. You might as well call yourself Wagon Wheel. 
Well, I'll tell you right now. Wagon well, Wheel Rick. Well, oh, Darius Rucker Rick. Yeah, Darius Rucker Rick. Hey. He said it's Rick Nickelback. I mean, why not call yourself Dimebag? Somebody has well, Darius that, Rick. Absolutely, and that's why I have the Nickelback moniker. Because How about I'm, Quarter Boy? I'm only half of what uh, Dimebag could be, so I'm just Nickelback Rick. All right, Nickelback Rick, you're the guest on a spot on the couch. And at this time, we would love for you to tell us a story. A spot on the couch brought to you by Oxygen Financial and Circle 280. You're going to regret this story, but back when I graduated high school around 1985, I had just broken up with my girlfriend, who had many girlfriends, and one girlfriend was... So always, she was a lesbian? No, she was Was always, her name Margaret? No, her name was... I'm not going to even say that, because this girl recently committed suicide, oh. and, that, and that's what made me think about this story. Nice story, Rick Nickelback. Yeah, bag, <laughs> and... Uh, so... Jeez. It's not going to get better than this. Um, so... When me and my girlfriend broke up, she was always constantly asking me to, oh, what are you like in bed? I want to try to get with you. So after me and my girlfriend broke up, she said, hey, I've got a bottle of Canadian mist and a half a bag of weed. Canadian mist. That's as old school as your name. you damn right. <laughs> she goes, why don't we go hang out and party? Let's so, do some 77. Damn right. <laughs> so... Gotcha. We wind up going out to this very uh, private location in a subdivision that had the streets paved, but not the houses built. That's what I'll say. So we parked out here on this. Uh, so the subdivision was under construction. Very so much. you're one of those guys that has sex in a house not quite finished. It wasn't even a house. It was still just a street. Oh. And uh, <laughs> they haven't even put the houses yet. They no, just, I had friends that actually had sex on top of sheetrock tiles. It was a thing. Yeah. And, friends. Uh, I got it. And uh, so... We went out, we're drinking Canadian Mist, we're smoking some of her weed, we're getting really high. We wind up uh, getting busy. Oh, did you have intercourse? Oh, well, we had intercourse and a lot of fellatio. Did you have outer course? She actually told she me. She had I, butt sex. I didn't have butt sex with her. I promise I didn't have butt sex with her. But uh, she told me, I ha you have to have me back in the skate rink by 1030 so I can go home with my friends. The skating so, rink, and she's in the seventh grade, you pervert? No, dude, this was in high school. But she did. She was a freshman. I was a uh, sophomore. Okay. So she she wasn't driving yet. I was driving yet. So that was a big deal. Okay. And um, so we went out. We partied. And uh, I went down on this girl. And it was very dark out in this place. As we're driving back, I drop her off at the skating rink at the very designated time. And as I see a few friends of mine, as I she gets out of my car and just walks towards her friends, I see a few of my friends. I walk over to them, and they're like, yo, Nickelback, what's up? And I'm like, nothing, man. Just party. And they're like, did you get in a fight or something? And I was like, no. Nah. And they're oh, like, why God. do you have fucking blood all over your face? And I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. This period moment brought to you by the Yeah, Come On Show. Keep in mind, we have no idea what these guests are going to say. I apologize. And I was like, blood on my face. Oh, and I looked in the fucking rearview mirror of a red Trans Am parked very close to us. I looked in and seen blood all over my face and realized I... And we know what happened to you, Rick. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got my red wings that night. So I then told my friends that, oh, I must have been eating French fries at McDonald's. Got a little bit of ketchup on my face. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> and uh, they're like, mm-hmm. And I drove Thanks. the fuck off in my Chevette with um, red wings all over my face. So that's what happens. Keep in mind, Rick Nickelback, I mean, back. Bag. 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 Don't do it. Drives Please. a Chevette, but he looks in mirrors of Trans Ams. I dig it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, shit. Come on. <laughs>